Hello, in this video I'm looking at task four of the second AAT sample assessment for DAFE. So 12 marks on the international accounting standards, 12 marks. How many international accounting standards that we have to learn about for 12 measly marks? So, sorry, I shouldn't undermine it. 10% of your exam. Um, a mixture in this task of a little bit of writing and ticking boxes. And no big long bits of writing, so that's good. Um, right, this one is the inventories of Woody Limited, a manufacturer of children's clothing, include a line of Parker coats at the accounting year end. The following information is relevant. Right, so this is a lower of cost and net realisable value task. So um, what you've got to be careful with here is that the cost is in the past. So the cost is going to be the 12,000. And then the net realisable value is in the future. So if we think we can sell it for, I'm just going to type it straight in here, 14,000 minus those estimated costs to complete of 3,000, minus the 700, selling costs estimated at 700, that is my net realisable value, which is 10,300. That compares to my original cost of 12,000, Um, therefore, value at 10,300 being the lower of cost and net realisable value. So what did it actually ask me to do? Calculate the amount at which the inventory of Parker Coats. So although it's a written human mark question, um, it, it's just typing in a calculation. So net re realisable value equals original cost equals, just kind of making it more user friendly for the marker, therefore do that. Right, just going to check the mark scheme. Um, so two marks for reference to the following. They've just said 10, 300 and shown that working. So I've gone a bit above and beyond there. Maybe it's coming in the next question. Ah, oh, yes. I should have read this before I started. Explain your answer. Right, so I've kind of done that already. So inventories should be valued at the lower of cost and net realisable value. Um, net realisable value is... Um, estimated selling price minus all extra costs needed to make the sale, which in this case is ten three hundred. Um. This is lower than the original cost of 12,000. 12,000, and so is the valuation figure. All right, let me have a look at what they've said. So they've given one mark for saying it should be low of cost and net realisable value. One mark for saying net realisable value is defined as estimated selling price less estimated costs of completion and estimated costs necessary to make the sale. They might give me that, they might not. But either way, I've got three marks there quite easily. The directors of Dunstan PLC are preparing the company's financial statements for the year ended 31st December. On the 10th of January, so after the year end, Dunstan announced a plan to restructure the company. 
Right, I know that a restructuring plan is a non-adjusting event because it's not giving me evidence. Oh, that's probably the answer here. Um, it's not giving me evidence of conditions that exist at the year end date. Um, so I'm just going to say that it's only one mark, one reason. Um, so restructuring a company after the year end date does not give evidence of conditions that existed at the year end date and so is non-adjusting. Right, let me check what the answer says. Um, it says this is because the announcement of the plan to restructure does not provide evidence of a condition that existed at the end of the reporting period. So it would have been better to have said at the end of the reporting period, but I'm pretty sure they would have given me that mark. State the accounting treatment of the announcement. Right, so we've said it's non-adjusting, so we know that we're not going to change the figure. But what we have to say is that the cost of the restructuring will be disclosed in a note to the accounts. One mark. Let me just check. They've said the cost of five million should be disclosed as a note in the financial statements. OK, I'm pretty confident I would have got that mark. The statement of financial position of Iconic Limited, a bed manufacturer, included an intangible asset of 900,000 at the 31st of December X0 in respect of the development of a new sleep sensor development. So we know that development costs can be included as intangible assets if they meet those six pirate criteria that we've, we've done if we've, you know, those was using the BPP books. The sleep sensor entered production on the 1st of October um, X1. So if it has been brought to production, 600,000 sensors are expected to be sold before being replaced with a more advanced product in three years time. In the year ended 31st of December, 30,000 sleep sensors were sold. Calculate the amount of the amortisation charge in respect of this development expenditure. Right, so we've got £900,000 of intangible asset. Um, it's going to last three years. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. The sleep centre entered production on the 1st of October X1. We want the amount of development expenditure for the year ended 31st of December, X1. Oh, OK, right. So 31st of December, X0. Uh, entered production on the 1st of October, X1. So... Right, so we've included it. So we've got to amortise it when it's actually being used. So a little bit puzzled by this, to be honest. Um, into production on the first of, I'm thinking it's, it's only started being produced on the 1st of October X1, and my year end is December X1. So let's see, I think, I'll check the answer obviously in a minute. So 900,000 for three years is 300,000 per year amortisation. But if I only want three twelfths of that,
All right, that gives me 75, and that's not the answer. Calculate the amount of the amortization charge in respect to this development expenditure. The answer is 45,000. The year ended that first December, 30,000 sleep sensors were sold. OK, let's have a rethink. I would obviously have got this wrong in the exam, which isn't very good. Um, I'm now thinking, looking at just trying to work back from their answer. So 30,000 divided by 600,000 times 900,000. That's what they've done. So they're saying that for our year end, 30,000 out of 600,000. So that's the the best spread of that amortization charge. Yeah, so I did 30 divided by 600 times by 900 to get to the 45, which is the correct answer. But as I said, I think I would have slipped up there in the real exam. Never mind, we know now. Um, right, D, identify whether each of the following costs should be included in the cost of an item of property, plant and equipment. So it's any cost to bring it to its um, up and running sort of condition. So the cost of a maintenance contract, definitely not because that's repeated. It's a revenue expense. Professional fees incurred, yes, because you have to incur them to buy it. And installation costs, yes. Oh, thank goodness for that. So three nice marks um, at the end there. So um, that's that's what you can expect, a mixture of IASs, a mixture of writing, explanation, ticking boxes, total of 12 marks. Okay. 